Hey guys, so first I'd like to mention that I do know about the redaction version of this game, but this is about the original Castlevania 2 game that came out in 1987. Now that I've got that out of the way, let's talk about my experience playing Simon's Quest for the first time. I love Castlevania 1 and Castlevania 3, but I've been scared of this one. I've always heard mixed things, and to be honest, I just didn't think I'd enjoy it, but I finally played it and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. At first though, I'll admit that I was a bit whiny because I was approaching it in a, uh, I'm gonna hate this mindset. I'm gonna hate this. Maybe not, but I probably am. But once I got the hang of the game, it was a different story. So the story takes place after you defeated Dracula in the first game, and pieces of his body are scattered everywhere. Gross. And you gotta collect some of them and carry them around with you. But I'll get to that in a minute. In this game, Simon isn't some lone ranger who keeps to himself, no. You have to actually talk to people. I don't like talking to people in real life, so why would I want to in this? Well, sometimes they say funny things, so it's worth it. But what the townspeople are really there for is to give you hints. Sometimes it's helpful. Like in the beginning, the guy tells you to get the white crystal, but most of the time I didn't obtain any of it because they say town names and shit that isn't posted anywhere. So how am I supposed to know wherever the blah 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 town is? There's no signs. I mean, there are signs, but... <sighs> then again, I'm not an RPG person, so maybe that's a me problem. Another thing that scared me right off the bat was that hearts are treated like money instead of ammo. I'm not used to that in my Castlevania games, you know? Oh, and the whip power-ups. Those two. Purchase a chain whip? Yeah. Oh, I don't have enough. Fuck. I was used to just whipping shit and bam, an upgrade. But it's actually not too bad once I got the hang of it. You just have to collect enough hearts and fight enough enemies to level up along with your whip. The whip upgrades are awesome in this game, and man, do you feel it. The flame whip is totally badass and just flat out destroys everything in one crack of your whip. But oh my god does it suck at first fighting enemies with a shitty whip. I mean, that's not particular to this Castlevania, cause I mean obviously the lowest whip is the worst, but I feel like I had a really hard time fighting some enemies at first. Maybe this isn't something that most people would have to get used to, but again, since I don't play a lot of RPGs, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta talk to people for stuff and grind. Cool. One of the main things that blew my mind was unlimited holy water. I love using the holy water as a weapon in Castlevania 1 and 3, but in this one it works a bit different. You more so use it to search for fake blocks in the floor, so you're throwing holy water all over the place. It's also a weapon, but it doesn't do that much damage. When it comes to buying stuff, it's always a man in a shady gray robe selling you stuff. Like he's a flasher. Or like, you know, one of those dudes selling doodads in New York City like it's the 1940s or something. But anyway, I'm glad it's always the same person or people that all have gray robes, so you know what to look for when it comes to buying items. You can wander around and explore, but not too much, which I personally like. I find it overwhelming sometimes when you can explore, explore, and explore. Like in Zelda, for example. The towns pretty much look the same, and sometimes the insides of the mansions got me confused, but the areas in between had different backgrounds and enemies which helped me keep track of where I was. The crypticness is bullshit, and yes, I call magically knowing to kneel here and do this cryptic. But seriously, the parts where you have to kneel, how would you know to do that? And you have to know to have the blue crystal on, at least I think it was the blue crystal, when you do it. Like in front of the water to access an underground area. Or kneeling with the red crystal waiting for the tornado. Oh, are we kneeling? Wait, 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 I think I know. Wait, is this the part where I put on the, the orb? Is this it? I mean, I know that's like an iconic part that everyone knows now, but still. At least it sold a lot of Nintendo power back in the day. Most people seem to say they play the redacted version or use a guide, which totally makes sense. Or you could be like me and live stream it and then depend on your chat if you got stuck. Thanks guys! Once I played it this way, I played it again some on my own for a while and I had a better time since I finally knew what I was doing. Shocking, I know. So back to Dracula's body parts. Each body part does something different. The item that I used the most was his rib because it becomes a shield. And I know it looks like a little dog chew toy, but it becomes a shield. Now I understand that maybe it could be a shield if it was like a whole rib cage, but it's just one little rib. If anything, it would make more sense to be able to throw it like one of the skeletons. Anyway, whatever. It works and I like it. 
You can also use Dracula's eyeball, the eye of Vlad, to find breakable walls, but I was just throwing holy water all over the place and I found myself rarely using it unless the chat was like, yo Aaron, use it. Anyway, if you equip his nail, you can break blocks with your whip and his heart wakes up the dude in the boat to take you to Bram's mansion. Let's get on this boat with this man we don't know. Sure, I'll take you to a good place. <laughs> Makes sense? No, but that's what happens. Oh, and Dracula's ring is also counted as a body part, and that opens the entrance to Dracula's castle. So now let's get to the gameplay. No bosses? No instant death when you get impaled? Is this really Castlevania? This might be hard to explain, but the gameplay itself isn't that hard. If anything, I'd say it's easier than the usual Castlevania games. You don't even have to fight the bosses unless you want a certain item. Well, in my experience, you do have to fight Camilla, you know, the giant head, but that's it. The enemies aren't that tough either. For example, there are no Medusa heads. Well, I mean, there's some floaty eyeballs and skulls, which I guess are this game's equivalent, and no flea men. Those tend to be the most annoying Castlevania enemies, so it was interesting not to see them. I will admit, the spider webs were pretty annoying. Not the spiders that shoot the webs, but the fucking webs themselves. They annoy me in Castlevania 3 too, but here I found it hard to hit them just right. In fact, for the longest time, I thought you couldn't do damage to them. In the beginning of the game, I also had trouble dealing with the werewolves when all you had is a shitty whip. Also, if you find yourself falling onto spikes, you don't instantly die. That felt strange. And that's just one of the surprisingly forgiving things in this game. Yeah, there's more! So when you die, they start you off right where you died. Not at the beginning of the level. Also, whenever you find a town's church, you can go in and heal yourself. It's awesome. Unless you find yourself in a godless town that lacks a church, then you're kind of screwed. What is hard though is the crypticness and some of the mansions are a little easy to get lost in. At least I thought so. So because of this, I wouldn't exactly call this game easy. It's complicated. It's like hard, but not in the way that you would think. I thought the transition to nighttime would be more annoying than it was. Uh oh, it's curse time! I got used to it rather quickly. I mean, yeah, it sucks when you're in the town waiting for it to be morning, but I just use that time to farm for hearts so I can level up and get more money to buy cool shit like laurels. Yeah, those make you invincible. Anyway, the enemies are harder at night, but once you're like level 2 and have a better whip, you're fine. Overall, once I got the hang of how to find secret rooms and how the, you know, the overall layout worked, I didn't find it too bad. Whether you like it or not, it's an iconic game. How many times have you seen what a horrible night to have a curse on a t-shirt? It's bullshitty, but overall I enjoyed it. I really didn't think I would, so I'm a little shocked. If you're like me and enjoy the Castlevania franchise but have been hesitant about playing Simon's Quest, I'd say give it a shot, but use a guide. As always, thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out some of my other Castlevania videos. See you next time. Bye!